QuickBooks Online 2024. Enter in purchase order or PO form and adding inventory items as we do. Get ready and some coffee because we're off to a quick start with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file. We set up in a prior presentation, opening up the major financial statement reports like we do every time the reports that are on the left. We're in the favorites. We're right-clicking on the balance sheet so we can open it in a new tab. And then the profit and loss, right-click to open it in a new tab. Tom Bean or as well the trial balance, right-click open link in a new tab. First, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Let's tab to the right to see what we have opened, closing up the hamburger, because leaving open hamburgers around gets messy. Someone might step on it or something. And then we're gonna go from 010124 to 022824, get ketchup on their foot. We're gonna run the report, let's run that. And then we'll tab to the right, close the hamburger. If I told you once, I told you a thousand times not to leave open hamburgers around. 010124 to 022824, and then we'll run that one. Oh, let's run it uh, month by month, hitting the drop down, month by month run. That looks better. Mucho mejor, muy bien, looks better. Closing up the hamburger trial balance, running the same kind of thing. 010124 to 022824. Let's put it on a month by month, on a side by side. Let's run it. Okay, let's go back to the balance sheet and consider what we're doing this time. We're gonna now do some of the more normal type of transactions on the second month of operations. So in the first month of operations, we did some transactions that are basically unique to the starting up of the company, including the financing of the business where we took out a loan and we also put money in ourselves. On the equity side of things, we purchased then uh, our inventory and our equipment to get the business off and running. In the second uh, month of the course, we spent some time on the first few transactions for transactions that are unique types of transactions for the uh, paying off of the loans to concentrate on the loan payments because they have to deal with the interest. And then we categorized our uh, accounts. Now we're into kind of the normal cycle for the second month of operations will be somewhat repetitive in some of the transactions we saw in the first month but we're going to have some new components to them. This time, we're going to be purchasing inventory again with a purchase order, but we'll basically add the inventory items as we enter the purchase order. So quick recap on the cycle here. This is a QuickBooks desktop uh, homepage, but we're using it for QuickBooks Online because we're just looking at the flow of the forms, which is basically the same for any accounting system. So we're dealing with inventory. We're dealing with a perpetual inventory system, which you might not always be doing if you're running QuickBooks. You might be using some kind of periodic system. That's fine, but we're gonna be tracking the inventory within our QuickBooks. And that means that the inventory is gonna have an impact on both the purchasing side of things and the sales side of things. Uh, it'll have, and we're focused now on the purchasing side of the inventory. When we buy inventory, the easiest way to do it would be that we just buy the inventory and we pay for it when we purchase it, in which case you would use a check form or expense form similar to if you bought something on an online store, like if you're in the United States, like an Amazon, you just bought something, you have to pay for it at the time you purchase it. But if you're a business, sometimes you might be able to request the inventory say you have shipping or something from china that's going to manufacture a bunch of teacups or something like that a bunch of cups of some kind and they're going to ship them over to you possibly you have the ability to request the shipment before you pay for it 
in which case that's what a purchase order would do. We're imagining we're buying the guitars. We're not paying for the guitars as we buy them. We're requesting the guitars to be shipped. And then when the guitars get to us, they will have a bill already there. And then we're going to either pay the bill or enter the bill at that time. So let's do this. We're going to go back on over. We're going to imagine we have a new vendor. Let's go to the first tab and select the drop down. Here's the story. We're going to go into the vendor tab and we're going to go into the purchase order. And that's because we had a new customer that came in and said they want a guitar from Fender, which is a vendor that we don't per currently have on the list. So we're like, okay, we'll set up Fender and see if we can get them on our vendor list. So we're going to say Fender, the new vendor, Fendor, I, I'm not, is it an E? I'm not sure, but we'll tab like that. And then we'll say save it. So here, th here it is. Now, obviously, we would want an email address if we're going to be emailing them the purchase order, but we're not going to need it in the practice problem. And then the ship to, where is it going to go? Well, it's not going to go directly to a customer, but it could. So if we wanted to pick a customer, we can ship it to the customer, but we're bringing it into our warehouse. So we're going to bring it into our warehouse, which is often risky because there's some hoodlums that are out to steal our inventory, but that's okay. We we have a system this time. It's going to work. It's going to work this time. All right. And let's say that we're going to do it on uh, February 2nd. So let's say two of 2024 and boom, boom, tab in through. We're not going to be using the category field because we're not buying, we're, we're tracking the inventory in the system. If I was using a perpetual inventory system, then maybe you would use the category field, but we want to track the units of inventory and therefore we're going to have an item. Now we've never dealt with Fender before. So that means that we're, it's a new vendor. That's why Fender that is. So we're going to have to then add an item. So we'll add the item that we want and we're just going to add it on the fly as we go here, as we do the data input. So we'll have a new one and I'm going to call it just an SQ. We're not going to have, uh, uh, it's going to be an inventory type and we, we could have an image of it if we if we needed to upload the image that could be helpful if you're like in a store no sku number category i'm not going to add the category but you can imagine grouping the categories these days by vendor possibly or possibly by type of guitar electric uh, acoustic or something like that quantity on hand zero i'm not going to put any quantity on hand when i add any more inventory that's really only happening when you first put the stuff on the books but it still makes you do that every time because it's a required field given by the asterisk for some reason. Reorder point, I'm going to say zero. I'm going to let it get down to zero before I reorder. The inventory asset account is going to be inventory. That's the account that's going to be going up when we purchase it. Not with the purchase order, however, because although it says purchase order, this is an, an, an order that we're, but we're not actually purchasing yet, yet. When we get the bill, that's when the inventory will go up. Okay, so then I'm going to say that we have the description on the sales form, which will be the invoices and the sales receipt. It's going to be a Squire guitar, we're going to call it. And then we're going to say, I'm just, I'm not an, a guitar expert over here, but I have like one kind of guitar, so I don't really, but <laughs> that's what it is. So we're going to say it's going to be the sale of product income. That's going to be the income account impacted on this when we do a sales form, which is going to be an invoice or the sales receipt. And then on the purchases side of things, we're also going to have the squire that's going to go in the purchasing forms, including the purchase order, the bill, the check or expense form. And then we're going to be saying that we we sell them for uh, 100 or we buy them for 168, we're going to say. So we buy them for 168 and then we sell them for 244. Expense account is going to be the cost of goods sold. That will be the expense account impacted when we use the sales forms, not the expense forms, but the sales forms, because that's when we expense the inventory, when we sell the stuff, that's being the sales receipt and the invoices. The preferred vendor we can go ahead and say is Fender. Fender, the new vendor is our preferred vendor, Fender. Let's go ahead and create that. Okay, so we're gonna say that we have uh, 20 of those at 168, that's uh, 3,360. Now we're purchasing them specifically for a new customer that wanted this, these guitars. So I'm gonna add a new customer. I like to just type it in, new music stuff. There's no vendor for that. So if I say tab, 
It's going to ask me if I want to add it. We do. I could add a lot more information which might be necessary such as the email address if I'm going to turn around and invoice them after I receive the guitar. That would be like the minimum. But I'm not going to put it here because the only required field is the asterisk and this is our practice problem. So note and remember that the vendor, our fender, our new vendor, doesn't care about the customer who requested the guitar. They, they just are going to complete the purchase order. But we internally want to know the customer because when I get the guitar with a bill in it and whatnot, I want to then turn around and create an invoice and sell it to the customer who I specifically purchased these guitars for. So remember at the bottom, it looks like it should be recording something. It looks kind of like an invoice or it looks kind of like a bill form. But we're not recording anything because we did not get the inventory. We did not pay for the inventory. Therefore, this is an internal document that we will be tracking and hopefully we'll get the guitars and we'll use the purchase order to help create the bill or expense form. So we can cancel it, we can clear it, we can print it, we can make it reoccurring, we can save it, we can save and close, save and new or save and send. We're gonna save and close. No impact on the financial statements, but internally we can track the form. It's gonna be in the expenses area, which I would call the vendor center. In the expenses tab, you can track them here by selecting the drop down and say, we want to be tracking the purchase orders, por favor. And then we can filter it, please, that is, por favor, please. And so then I can say all transactions or just the open ones, possibly, open transactions. And there it is. There's our purchase order. So then I can also go to my vendors. And these are the people we purchase stuff from, of course. And we could say, I want to look at the filter of the open purchase order on the vendor side of thing. And there's our new vendor known as Fender. And we can go into it. And so there we have it. There's our purchase order. Then we could send it again. And we can copy it to a bill, which is likely the next thing that will happen once we get the guitars. Because there'll be a bill in it. And then we have to actually pay for the stuff. Okay, so nothing new on the trial balance. So just to note, just recall... If I go to the balance sheet, we're at the same spot that we were before. Balance sheet is still in the same balance. And then we're going to tab to the right income statement. Nothing new happening here either. And then if I look at the trial balance, balance sheet on top of the income statement, we should still be at the same point we were at last time. Assets on top then the liabilities, and then the equity, and then the income accounts, income and expenses. Remembering that the income accounts, all of this from equity on down, you could squish into one number, just taking the credits minus the debits or the beginning balance uh, plus the net income, right? And I can do that just to, I just like to show that each time, 010125, uh, 010125 because I think that's like the most confusing thing for a lot of people. And once you see it a couple times, then it's easy to kind of see. So it squished it into one number. It's just one number. It's the timing of that one number. The income statement is part of equity. When you think of the accounting equation as assets minus liabilities equals equity, equity being the book value of the business, being the bottom line in essence. And the story then of one year back is simply taking that breakout of the last usually year of data.